Hello everyone, I'm Rebecca Keppel. In today's video, I am sharing several different ways to use the Misty Creative Corners. The Misty Creative Corners have been around for a while now, and I always forget to pull them out. And when I did in a recent video, I asked if you all would be interested in seeing some ideas for using them. And a lot of people said they would be. So today's video is to answer that. Now, I will be honest, I racked my brain for some like really new and exciting ideas on how to use them. I couldn't really come up with many other ideas that haven't already been thought of. So you've probably seen most of these ideas. It's more just a reminder to pull them out and how useful they can be. First, let's review what comes in the Creative Corners kit or show it to you for the first time if you haven't seen it yet. They do have these two plastic triangles. Each has one right angle. There's also an L ruler, also has a right angle. Those right angles can be tucked right into the misty corner itself. And then there are two corner magnets that have three round magnets. I lost one, I don't know where that one went. And these corners can be placed together, they can be used singly, and they can help you move your cardstock out towards the center of the misty, and I'll show you later what I mean by that. These are really made to be used with the original sized misty. Now, you can fit some of these in a mini misty, absolutely. Some of you have asked me if they can be used in other stamp positioners. I really don't know because I only have the mini misty and the original misty. So you can see the L ruler is too big for the mini misty. That's why it's really meant for the original size, but these small corner magnets could be used in the mini misty. It just it's not going to give you that much space to do extra large stamps or anything like that. You could use the angles as well to do some angled stamping, but like I said, these are really meant for for the original Misty, and I just don't know how thick the other stamp positioners work surfaces are and whether or not these would work with them. So really it's kind of a buyer beware if you have a different stamp positioner and you wanna try and use these with it. So I'm just trying to show you how thick they are just to give you an idea. I think my favorite way to use the creative corners is to stamp off the side of the card using an extra large stamp. So you can see this large floral stamp from Simon Says. I want it to hang off the top and the bottom so that it looks like the image is cut. And you can see that I can't do it horizontally and I can't do it vertically if I want the corner of the cardstock to be in the corner of the Misty. That's what those corners with the three magnets are perfect for. So you can see I put the little corner three in the corner of the Misty and that pushes the cardstock out towards the middle of the original Misty, gives me a little bit more room so that I can have the stamp hanging off the top and the bottom, which is just a nice look on the edge of a card. It just gives a completely different look rather than having the whole image on the card itself. So once I have that corner in place, I'm just gonna see if two makes any difference. You can see that that does give you more room if you wanted to have the top on the card and the bottom hanging off, but I really wanted this to be a top and bottom hanging off the card. I really like the way that looks. I'm gonna use the second corner on the top just to hold the cardstock in place. You could also put your bar magnet up there if you wanted to. I feel like this is gonna keep it right where it needs to be. And I'm gonna pick up this large stamp reposition my cardstock because it did get stuck to the stamp and just make sure that that bottom corner is right in the corner of the misty and the cardstock is in the corner of that little guide ma magnet there. I'm going to use some emboss ink from the stamp market and I'm going to ink up this entire stamp because I'm not exactly sure where the edge will be so I just ink up the whole stamp. It's fine. You can. I'm using a misty mouse pad as well so you can just clean that off. You don't have to worry about throwing out a piece of paper. So I'm gonna use my Stamper Secret Debbie tool because this is a large stamp and I wanna get nice even pressure across the entire stamp. This makes that really easy to do without having to really bang or rock on the misty door, which can give you a smushed image. So I'm gonna do this again with a little bit more ink because with the embossing ink, obviously, since it's clear, it's hard to tell if you're really getting good coverage on the stamp with the ink pad, especially I have a little bit of staining on this ink 
um, the stamp as well. So, you know, it's just really tough for me to tell if I've really inked up the whole thing. But after the second stamp, you can see I got all the details there and I'm just gonna pour gold embossing powder on top. Love the look of the gold on this teal cardstock, so pretty. And then I'm just gonna tap off the excess there and then heat set that to get that gold finish, which is going to be so pretty because we're going to ink blend on top of it and that gold metallic embossing powder will act as a resist. I'm using the same color of ink as cardstock. They are both by the stamp market. It is tropical teal, and I'm gonna use one of the stamp market's blending brushes to blend a little bit of ink on top of this heat embossed image. So you can see when I lifted up my hand there, I got ink all over the side of this image. So I ended up fussy cutting around the right hand side of it, and then I'm just going to adhere it down to another piece of teal cardstock. But the cool thing is that the top and the bottom is cut off of the image. So it just looks like it's going from top to bottom. I'm gonna use one of the sentiments from that same stamp set, and this one I am going to stamp up with black ink from the stamp market on top of that teal cardstock. And wait and see how nicely that black ink stamps right on that cardstock. And this time I'm using the mini Misty because I'm just doing the little sentiment and then this little branch I'm also gonna stamp in the teal to complete this card. So just a fun way to use the corners to stamp off the edge. The My Sweet Petunia YouTube channel shared this tip, which is you can use your stencils in your Misty as well, and you can use the triangles to create lines of color. I'm using Trinity Stamps Bed of Roses stencil. It's actually two stencils, but I'm just using the flowers today. And I have a piece of A2 white cardstock. I did put a little bit of adhesive on the back just to hold it in place because I wasn't sure if I was going to place it in the corner or not. And since I'm using the mouse pad, I can absolutely put a little bit of adhesive back there to hold it in place. I ended up using the L ruler, the corner, and then the triangle here so that I could basically, and what I'm doing is masking off the area that I don't want to ink blend right now with those three pieces from the creative corners. And I'm using Stamp Market inks and blending brushes. This is Melon. So now I've removed the L ruler. I just have the corner and the triangle, and I'm going to blend over a little bit of the pink so that those two colors blend together. Now I've taken the corner out and I'm just using the triangle and I'm going to switch to Coral Reef, which is a really bright, pretty color, and it works really well with the melon next to it. So I'm gonna blend that little bit there, and then I'm just gonna take out that triangle, and I'm gonna go back to the first color I used, which was Party Pink, and I'm gonna do this corner of the cardstock with that. So it just really makes it easy to mask off areas, and then stencil, and since I'm using the mouse pad underneath, I don't have to be worried about ruining anything in my Misty either. So here's the finished product. I love this technique, so much fun. I did cut it down to four by five and a quarter so that I could mat it on some pink cardstock. And of course, that L shape can be used to line up your sentiments. So my sentiment was a little wide to have the L sticking up, but that can really help you because it's a corner that will help you really straighten it. But I just used the ruler itself to slide the sentiment into place so that it was nice and straight. I tend to create very linear cards, so I love using the creative corners to stamp on an angle. I'm gonna use one of the stamps from Simon Says Stamp. Rainbow is my favorite color stamp set. You can see that there's no way I could get this diagonally across the card without having it stuck on either side or bottom of the Misty. So what I'm gonna do is use the corner to move the cardstock out and then use the triangle to straighten the line because when I just try and throw that really long line down, it's like totally not straight at all. So that triangle really helps. Then you can take it out and just use the corner in your bar magnet or the other corner to stamp the first line. And I'm gonna use, of course, the Debbie tool to really get that good impression and Look at that. I love how it's off both angles. I love a diagonal card when I'm just always in the rut of making straight linear cards. So I'm gonna go through and 
I'm not moving the stamp at all. I'm moving the panel itself and I'm using the guidelines on the Misty mouse pad to move this, the panel up a square. And that's allowing me to get pretty even spacing between these lines until I mess it up right here. <laughs> I stamped it way too close. I don't know what happened if I didn't move it or if it accidentally moved back when I wasn't paying attention, but that's okay, still looks cute. So I had to flip it around and reposition the stamp to get the next line in because even with the creative corners, the stamp was getting in the way. That's also okay because now I have the stamped lines to work with as far as lining it up. Now I'm going to use that triangle once again to line up my sentiment this time. So I don't have it positioned in the corner. I'm just using it as a guideline. I'm keeping it near the rainbow so that I can see if it's straight and I'm just using it to line it up in the same angle as the rainbow line that we stamped. And then I used it again to line up these little hearts on either side of the sentiment for my purple of the rainbow because I didn't have really enough room to do the purple at the bottom. And I really liked this kind of open white area on one side and then that strips of rainbow on the other. This is a really clean and simple card and the angle was easily created with those corners. Speaking of angles, you can also use the triangles to crease a line of pattern paper so that you can have a triangle of pattern paper on your cards. I have a six by six piece of pattern paper in the corner of the Misty. I also have my white A2 in the corner of the Misty down there. And I am just using the triangle as a guide to bend the paper and fold it so that I can just place the fold over the edge of my paper trimmer. You can see that I have the fold butted right up against the edge of the paper trimmer so that when I trim it, I've got the exact piece that I wanted cut out. It just makes it so much easier. Every time I try and cut an angle, I end up messing it up. So this was just a really simple way to get that angle of pattern paper. And then I decided to go straight with the cloud, the sentiment, and a couple of little hearts to kind of mix it up and add some contrast between the angle and the straight stamping. You can also use your misty corners to have edge to edge stamping so that the stamping is flush on two different sides. Again, I am using a bunch of the stamps from the Simon Says Stamp. Rainbow is my favorite color stamp set. These are four different arc stamps. You can see that I wouldn't be able to get it flush if I had the A2 panel in the corner of the Misty, which keeps it solid. So I put that corner magnet in there and then just put my bar magnet to hold it in place. This time, I am not moving the paper. I'm positioning each stamp so that the edges of the arc fall off both sides of the cardstock, meaning that I have it flush on both the right and the left hand side of this card. And then I'm just gonna add my sentiment and my little heart. I hope this video inspired you to pull out your Misty Creative Corners and use them for some fun and dynamic looks on your cards. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe below if you wanna see more card making tips tricks, techniques, and new product reviews. As always, thank you so much for stopping by and spending your time with me today. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you again soon. Promised to do, no, that's not it. Corners is where, hmm, it's just one more time. Speaking of angles, speaking of angles, speaking of angles, you can use the triangles in your, to have, too many words.